so what Mike and I are working on today is a Bobcat, it's a 341 and they never break down in the most convenient spot. I think you can see our truck way down there, but we lost all hydraulic functions. I think the, uh, instantly, right? And then if we lose all hydraulic functions on one of these older machines and you lose blade control, we know that we probably have a problem with the pump or the pump coupler itself because the pump or the blade is manual manual cable control yep. where everything else is pilot control so if you were to have a micro switch or something go bad and you were to try to work the blade it should work regardless right because it is manual cable so what we're going to try to do is based off other videos we know that we probably got a strip pump coupler but sometimes what we can do to get it off the mountain is back the pump up and we can get the internal gear into a better spot in the actual drive coupler and we can probably drive this down the hill. So that's what we're attempting to do now. Mike's already got the muffler out of the way and he's got the pump loosened up. So we're gonna back these bolts up almost out of the way, almost all the way out. And then we're gonna back the pump out of the coupler just to see if we can get some teeth engagement to get this thing off the hill. So let's loosen up these bolts a little more. We're gonna probably pull this pump off. good inch or so. Another thing that we, we see asked all the time is, do you have to remove the pump, drain all the hydraulic fluid and remove all the lines? I, as many of these couplers I've done, I've never removed all the hydraulic lines and drained all the hydraulic oil. Most every machine I've ever done, there's enough room that we can just back the pump off, get the bell housing and everything off without draining all the oil and removing the lines. So I think I just saw that question asked last week. Wasn't that in our tech talk? Maybe. One day. Let's see, I can't really get them. Oh. Yeah, just let it down. It'll. There we go. I think that's good enough right there. I think so. We'll try that. Okay. So you can see where we separated the pump from the bell housing, and what that's doing is that's just going to maybe, hopefully, re-engage the gear a little bit. That's not a guarantee, but it's definitely worth a try. Still no functions. No blade control either. Okay. So either the pump coupler is just stripped really bad or sometimes the gear comes loose on the pump shaft and maybe the gear's just completely falling off the pump shaft. So we're gonna have to go ahead and pull the pump all the way out and see what happened. So kind of what I was thinking was a possible uh, failure point is, Sometimes the gears just get loose and they come off the pump shaft. See, that should be mounted. Sometimes I'll even put bearing mount or red Loctite on the gear um, to the pump shaft. So that's what happened is, so the gear is still in here on the center plate. I guess I can pull it out here. That's what I mean, how you can get the pump out of the way. You don't ever pull the pump all the way out, but it's pretty loose it looks like it went all the way through the coupler so we might get lucky on this one the coupler might still be good let's see if we can kind of see where the coupler is in there this is what we're trying to get out but it pushed all the way through the plastic coupler and we cannot get it out. I can still see some good teeth in the plastic coupler, but since we can't get it out, now we've got to pull off the whole bell housing here. So we got the engine mounts on the bell housing. So Mike's gonna go ahead and start taking the starter off. And then we got to pull all the bell housing bolts off and the engine mount bolts off, lift the engine up probably with a pry bar and slide the bell housing off. So once yeah. we get all that off, we'll show how the coupler actually mounts to the back of the flywheel. We finally got the bell housing off. It wasn't too bad. It just the hard part was getting the engine lifted up. 
but now that we got it lifted up with the pry bar we're able to sneak it out of there but now you can kind of see a better idea of what's going on we got the plastic coupler and here's our gear that's supposed to engage it and it's just slid all the way in so we couldn't get it to pull back through so we got this uh, allen head bolts here on the outside of this pump coupler that we got to take off and then we'll just replace both sides of it whenever you replace the plastic one you always want to do do them as a set you replace them at the same time so let's get these loosened up and we'll take a look what's inside so we got it off and we can see why i couldn't get it out of the coupler see the teeth there are supposed to engage in the coupler and it just completely melted the inside of the coupler so there's no teeth for it to re-engage or to pull back through so kind of makes sense how it fits in that coupler but we're just like i said we're going to replace it with the brand new set here like that so mike's on the phone because we didn't bring our service manual and i forgot or i don't remember the act we've, we've got a measurement that we've got to lock the coupler on the pump shaft okay, so here we'll so right mike's calling right now to get that measurement but what i'm going to do is go ahead and get the new coupler put on okay, we're going to use block, blue loctite on the bolts here blue to hold the uh let's see plastic coupler on right just mounts to the flywheel no, just like here. that and of course we're, we're replacing the bolts we're putting new okay, bolts yeah, in there all always buy new bolts when you get a new pump okay, pump coupler because too often, more than not, we, we strip those out and sometimes we have to okay. drill them out or vice grip them out or something, but those Allen head strip because they are Loctited in. And it is recommended to Loctite them in, but I use blue so they can come out. But you get one where someone put red Loctite on there, you're probably gonna strip those out. Well, Mike and I just got the bell housing back on, but you can see we didn't get the new gear on. It looks like, uh, right box wrong part maybe wrong part number i don't know what happened we had the right coupler but the actual inner gear coupler the inside shaft here was too big for our pump so we're having to reuse the old one i mean it's not recommended but it's not in terrible shape um, but when we're in the field that's just what you got to do i mean we're a long way from getting another one. probably i'd say probably a week wouldn't you think mike yep. by the time we order it get the part in and make it all the way back up here it'd probably be a week before we got it going so that's why we're just going to use the old coupler get off the mountain and you know if they decide we can bring it down to the shop and uh just replace that at some point but at least this will get us off the hill okay. mike well mike's about to start it up but we got everything put back together i guess it wasn't too bad was it mike not terrible we're not gonna be late for lunch are we better not be all right well, let's see if it works and then mike's got to drive it back down the mountain there it never looks as steep as it is when it's on video it's steep <laughs> take a nap while Mike's up there doing all the hard work. See, that's steep, man. It is steep. It's scary. So you got to pan the camera back to me real quick. I was too scared to do this, <laughs> so I volunteered not to do it. So we let the owner of the machine do this. I know, it never looks so steep on video. No, not for me. Nope. Well, thanks for your help, Mike. I think it took us, so between the two of us, and we had to, of course, hike this hill, what, probably 10 times? I know I did it three myself. Yeah. So Mike had to do it probably five or six times at least. But anyway, so about what, two and a half hours? Almost three hours. I guess about three hours between the two of us hiking the hills. Nothing crazy. Not including the couple hour drive in either direction just to get down here. So, well, cool. Another successful uh, pump coupler on an excavator. 
pretty straightforward. Hopefully that made sense. I know we didn't get a lot of hands-on footage, but at least we show how the coupler uh, mounts and uh, what happens when the couplers fail. A couple different scenarios of how the couplers fail. So, anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let us know. Oh, look, there's a mouse. Mouse. Squish mouse. Mouse.